right friends welcome back to questions and answers advanced this is 38th week from 14th to 20th september and we are going to discuss some questions with detailed explanation and the first question is ntca undertakes a census of tiger population once in 4 years is the answer the census of tiger population are being undertaken once in 4 years and that is the national tiger conservation authority which is the statutory body and it started functioning from 2006 basically to implement the project tiger project tiger was started in 1973 and it is a totally centrally sponsored scheme project tiger was started in 1973 and totally centrally sponsored scheme and it is under the ministry of environment forests and climate change and to implement the project tiger this national tiger conservation authority was brought as a statutory body in the year 2006 and this national tiger conservation authority undertakes a census of tiger population once in 4 years please don't forget look into the next one as per the gazette notification issued on 9th january 2015 all the existing persons of indian origin will be deemed to be overseas citizens of india previously we used to have these two categories persons of indian origin persons of indian origin means it has got its own definition like uh, when his grandfather or grandmother or father or mother if any one of them maybe paternal grandmother maternal grandmother paternal grandfather maternal grandfather if any one of them belongs to indian origin they were considered as persons of indian origin then second category is overseas citizens of india overseas citizens of india means previously they were citizens of india after the date of uh, the commencement of the constitution that means our constitution came into force on 26th january 1950 and subsequent to that at any point of time they were citizens of india but at present they are no more citizens of india they migrated to other country and got a citizenship there because india does not allow dual citizenship so these comes under overseas citizens of india persons of indian origin overseas citizens of india so persons of indian origin and overseas citizens of india got merged on 9th january 2015 and now only one category exists that is overseas citizens of india right so the first sentence is absolutely correct that means all the pio card holders will become overseas citizens of india card holders the second important point is overseas citizens of india is the category and they are the citizens of another country at present they are the citizens of another country at present but was a citizen of india at the time of or after the commencement of the constitution at one point of time they were citizens of india but now they are no more citizens of our country and they are citizens of other country so they are called oci category that means overseas citizens of india category now pio card holders i have already told you pio means maternal grandfather maternal grandmother or he got some link with origin he got some link with uh, indian nationality so these people are persons of indian origin now two categories uh, do not exist now persons of indian origin merged with overseas citizens of india please don't forget now only one category exists that is overseas citizens of india so the second sentence is also correct look at the third sentence oci is also applicable for nationals of pakistan and bangladesh absolutely wrong this overseas citizens of india category is not applicable for nationals of pakistan and bangladesh so the third sentence is wrong one and two sentences are correct so the right option is one for this question look at the next one agritech infrastructure fund agritech infrastructure fund was created with a corpus of rupees 200 crore to promote national agriculture market 
to promote the national agriculture market this an agritech infrastructure fund was created with a corpus of 200 crores absolutely correct look at the second sentence the main purpose of uh, this uh, agritech infrastructure fund is to integrate uh, common e platform between farmers and traders that means that is uh, connecting farmers and uh, traders by creation of uh, e mandis that means bringing 585 regulated markets under e platform that means the establishment of e mandis bringing 585 mandis onto the platform over a period of 3 years that is the main aim of this agritech infrastructure fund basically to give better service to the farmers as far as the cost of agricultural produce is concerned so as to eliminate the middlemen so as to eliminate the exploitation of farmers this national agriculture market is being contemplated for that 200 crores is kept which is known as agritech infrastructure fund right look into the next one jagmohan dal mia who passed away recently was the president of bcci he was a president this is the second term previously he was a president of bccai from 2001 to 2004 and now from march 2015 till his death he was a president of bccai and please don't forget he also worked as a president of international cricket council from 1997 to 2000 please don't forget he passed away recently in kolkata Consider the following statements: Twenty percent safeguard duty on specific range of steel products will protect the domestic steel industry to some extent. Twenty percent safeguard duty. This three duties. Please don't forget. One is a safeguard duty. The second one is anti-dumping duty. Third one is anti-subsidy countervailing duty. one is a safeguard duty the second one is anti dumping duty third one is anti subsidy countervailing duty now this question pertains to safeguard duty i will limit my discussion to safeguard duty safeguard duty is being imposed when the government feels that because of a cheap imports temporarily Indian industry is being injured cheap imports if they cause injury to the indian industry injury can be caused not only to the human beings but also to the industry because of cheap imports indian industry will suffer that is injury to the indian industry this is a temporary phenomena cheap steel products are coming from china south korea japan in recent times because of a glut in the world market and that is causing injury to the indian steel market that's why this 20% safeguard duty was imposed this safeguard duty what is the procedure of implementing this safeguard duty for implementing this safeguard duty director general safeguards which is under the department of revenue ministry of finance director general safeguards will recommend and subsequently board of safeguards headed by commerce secretary and if there is genuine reason then he will recommend for implementation and the ministry of finance will notify the implementation this is the procedure so please don't forget director general safeguards is under the ministry of finance and board of safeguards is with the ministry of commerce right and ministry of finance will finally give notification for this safeguard duty right this is the right sentence look at the second one safeguard duty will not be applicable to the countries which india has free trade agreements absolutely wrong 
सेफ गार्ड ड्यूटी इज अप्लीकेबल फॉर ऑल द कंट्रीज इट इज ए टेम्पररी मेजर एंड रिसेंटली दिस सेफ गार्ड ड्यूटी वॉज इम्पोज फॉर ए पीरियड ऑफ टू हंड्रेड डेज इट इज अप्लीकेबल फॉर ऑल द कंट्रीज इरेस्पेक्टिव ऑफ इंडिया हैज फ्री ट्रेड एग्रीमेंट्स आर नॉट सो प्लीज करेक्ट द सेकेंड सेंटेंस दिस सेफ गार्ड ड्यूटी विल बी अप्लीकेबल टू ऑल द कंट्रीज सो Please correct the second sentence in this question. Look at the next one. There was a controversy with regard to allowing Paresh Parwa to visit his ailing mother. He is heading the anti-talk faction of Ulfa. Interpol issued red corner notice against him. What is Interpol? Interpol is International Criminal Police Organization. International Criminal Police Organization. Where is the headquarters? Headquarters is in Lyon in France. This is International Criminal Police Organization. It runs with the contribution from the countries. At present, there are 190 countries. Interpol is the name basically which came from Radio Telegraph Code for the organization. Basically, the organization is International Criminal Police Organization. And how it functions, I will tell you. Some ex has committed some atrocity in this country. Some ex has committed some atrocity in this country. He is uh, Indian national committed some atrocity, and he left the country, and now he is uh, staying in Germany. And to arrest him, India will take the assistance of Interpol, and Interpol will issue red corner notice, and Germany is required to arrest him and send him back to India. So. Interpol is the organization which issues red corner notice. There are several notices: red corner notice, blue corner notice. I am not going into those details. This red corner notice is issued by International Criminal Police Organization based on the request made by one member country to Interpol to arrest a criminal who left the country after committing the atrocity. right so the second sentence is also correct interpol is the intergovernmental criminal police organization and the headquarters is in france please don't forget look into the next one balco balco is uh, bharat aluminium company it is a subsidiary of vedanta group decided to shut down its uh, plant at korba chatisgarh right sentence recently balco decided to shut down its operations at korba in chatisgarh this is the right sentence look at the second one companies can close their operations based on sikh industrial companies act 1985 absolutely wrong companies can close their operations based on industrial disputes act 1947 please correct the second sentence companies can close their operations based on industrial disputes act 1947 third sentence there is not much demand for aluminum in the country is absolutely wrong there is demand for aluminum but the problem is aluminum prices fell from 2200 dollars per ton to 1600 dollars per ton during the past 8 months and because of this reason cheap imports are coming to this country that's why domestic industry is not able to run with profitability that's why balco decided to close its operations so only the first sentence is correct so the right option is one second and third sentences are wrong please correct second and third sentences look at the next one for august 2015 wholesale price index inflation is a minus 4.95% all of you are well aware wholesale price index for August stood at minus 4.95 percent. It is in negative territory for the past 10 months, and at the same time, CPI inflation also reached its historic low of 3.66 percent. This is a factual statement, absolutely correct. Second one, these figures are released by Central Statistics Office. This is absolutely wrong. please don't forget who releases what i would like to tell you central statistics office under the ministry of statistics and program implementation releases consumer price index index of industrial production and gdp cpi 
GDP, IIP. These three are released by Central Statistics Office. And two indices, that is the progress of core industries. There are eight core industries where electricity has got maximum weightage. Please don't forget. There are eight core industries. The progress of core industries, how they are performing along with the wholesale price index is released by Office of the Economic Advisor, Department of Industrial Policy and Promotion, Ministry of Commerce and Industry. So, please don't forget WPI and Core Industries Growth are released by Office of the Economic Advisor, Department of Industrial Policy and Promotion, Ministry of Commerce and Industry. Please don't forget. So, please correct the second sentence. Third sentence. Food articles have nearly 50% weightage in consumer price index and manufactured products outweigh others in wholesale price index basket. That is absolutely correct. Food outweigh in consumer price index and wholesale price index constitutes manufacturing products. And that is why at the consumer level, this consumer price index is considered to be more factual from consumer point of view. That is why Reserve Bank of India also looks at the CPI inflation only. So, for the given question, one and three options are correct. Second one is wrong. Please correct the second sentence. So, for the given options, third is the right option. Right friends, look at the next one. Government imposed 20% safeguard duty on hot rolled flat steel products. Just now we have discussed. It is the right sentence. Second one, these can be imposed to safeguard domestic industry as a temporary measure. Absolutely correct. But they are World Trade Organization compliant. Please correct the sentence. This is safeguard duties, anti-dumping duties. The third one is anti-subsidy countervailing duties. These three can be imposed when the need arises and they are WTO compliant. So, WTO or World Trade Organization permits imposition of these three duties when the need arises. Right? So, please correct the second sentence. This safeguard duty is WTO compliant. Look at the next one. Foreign currency convertible bonds are the bonds issued by the listed companies in the overseas markets. Absolutely right sentence. This foreign currency convertible bonds are the bonds issued by the listed companies in overseas market. Why they take or borrow money from abroad? Because by issuing bonds, they borrow money from abroad because of the reason the interest rates in developed economies much less in comparison to interest rates in India. The second point is, the interest rate paid by them is normally less but will have a clause to convert them into shares midway through at the pre-agreed price. Absolutely right sentence. The meaning of convertible bonds is they can be converted to shares at the pre-agreed price. Why companies borrow money from abroad? Because of the basic reason the interest rates are less there. Right? So, both the sentences are correct here. Look at the next one. Manas National Park is in the red list of IUCN. Absolutely right sentence. Manas National Park, it is in Assam, it is in the red list of IUCN. What is IUCN? IUCN is International Union for Conservation of Nature. International Union for Conservation of Nature, it is a Switzerland based organization, initially established in France in the year 1948, but now the headquarters in Switzerland, it gives a red list. What indicates? What is the meaning of red list? Red list basically indicates the threat to the biological species. Red list indicates 
threat to the biological species that means when the biological species are threatened when the biological species are in the state of extinction when there is a threat to the biological species this iucn international union for conservation of nature switzerland based organization it gives the red list so and so biological species is threatened its survival is at stake that is the meaning of red list so please correct the second sentence iucn red list indicates that the biological species in manas national park is at risk right so please correct the second sentence first sentence is only correct look at the next question powerful 8.3 magnitude earthquake hit chile it is on the ring of fire this is horse shoe shaped region to know more about it we have to go to plate tectonics it is a horse shoe shaped region region set close to uh, new zealand or you can say the pacific islands if you start there it uh, goes through indonesia then if you look at the other side it is uh, chile peru on the west coast and the west coast of uh, united states of america so this is a horseshoe shaped region abutting pacific ocean or you can say in pacific ocean which is known as ring of fire it contributes to almost 70% of volcanoes in the world and 80% of earthquakes occur in this region this is one region which is known as ring of fire the second region is alpine belt alpine belt includes our himalayan region also right so this ring of fire contributes maximum volcanoes and earthquakes in the world please don't forget look into the next question import duty on crude edible oil raised from 7.5% to 12.5% and on refined varieties from 15% to 20% this is to protect domestic industry import duties are raised sometimes to protect the domestic industry because domestic oil seed farmers and processing industry are demanding enhancement because import of edible oils is on increase which is hurting the domestic industry right look at the last question central government notified mandatory export of 4 million tons of sugar central government recently issued a mandatory instruction that 4 million tons of sugar is to be exported why what is the reason and please don't forget sugar season starts from october to september and we are carrying forward 10 million tons of excess sugar 10 million tons of excess sugar is in the country now and in the year 2015 16 the expected production is 28 million tons out of which we may consume around 25 million tons that means 3 million tons is extra so by the end of a crushing season of 2015 16 we will be left with 13 million tons of excess sugar because of which there may be fall in prices so to protect our sugar industry government kept export target of 4 million tons during this year that is the main reason for imposing target of this export of sugar right so with this let us conclude the questions and answers advanced and please to join for lecture as well as news analysis and features we are discussing several important events and have a nice day thank you